Massive public-private partnerships were created so that youngsters who did not have smart devices at home could do their work remotely. School buses were also outfitted as Wi-Fi hotspots so kids could have access to the Internet once they had a device. By spring 2021, digital access for low-income households with K-12 students improved to 64.4% up from almost 45% a year earlier. Still, a literal disconnect remains for thousands. To that end, California's Public Utilities Commission is working hard to close the digital divide. CPUC Director Robert Osborne with me now live to talk about a grant program to do just that. Welcome to Fox 40 News at 11. Thank you. Glad to be here. 17 million California kids lacked access to a connected device for learning when the pandemic started. 11 million lacked sufficient broadband access. The CPUC is offering four grants to nonprofit community-based organizations or CBOs to partner with school districts. What's the size of the grants and what should these CBOs be ready to do? So the grants, we have a number of grant programs to close the digital divide. And I think what the pandemic really demonstrated is that Internet service is no longer a nice to have. It's a necessity. And um, there are parts of the state that still do not have adequate service. And our grant programs are really designed to close that gap. Um, as you said earlier, the public-private partnerships are a key element of that. Um, and so the local agency technical assistance grants that we announced last week um, to 20 local governments and cities um, were designed to encourage public-private partnerships and really help local, um, particularly rural areas, become involved in the broadband planning and broadband deployment across the state. And this program, uh, one of them that's specifically looking at community-based organizations partnering with school districts, really targeting some of the areas in our state that even after all of the public-private investment in this area still really need help. We're talking about urban or rural low-income small school districts where at least half of the campus population is receiving free or reduced lunch. Why so important to be that targeted? Yeah, so the, the big challenge, as you know, is not only on the deployment side, it's also on the adoption side. So those are two sides of the same coin. So even if people have broadband available at their house, they may not be able to afford it. They may not have the device. They may not have, know how to access it. And so these grants are designed to really close that gap, um, provide devices to the extent possible, and also provide training and connection to low-income programs if, if they're eligible for, for those students. One of the ways a grant applicant could plan to help a district is with curriculum focused on the use of technology. Now, this really seems key with the State Department of Education revealing this week lower student test scores after the height of the pandemic, a 4% drop in students meeting or exceeding language arts standards and a 7% drop in math achievement. Some of the problems we hear heard from families once distance learning was in full swing was that what kids were being assigned or the classroom presentations didn't seem to really flow in an online digital kind of environment. So is that something that you've seen? Certainly, and, and that is one of the challenges as we made this really rapid change to a remote, 100% remote environment. Um, I, even my own kids had, had struggled with trying to attend classes and follow the course coursework as things were going. Um, I think as we're returning back to the classroom, you know, some of that is being taken care of by, by physically being in the classroom again. But I think what we're learning through this process is that just having a connection just having a, a digital device and being able to, to attend a class alone is not sufficient. You need to design the coursework to fit the, the medium. Families have really been wrestling with this issue since 2020. The governor's talked all about the ways to get access. Of course, we here have the federal government's been pushing out information and access. And still, the Federal Communications Commission estimates 2.5 million families here aren't signed up for federal funded digital access. What's not happening that this word is just not getting out there? So, and that's a continual struggle. We're about 30% of the po eligible population for the Affordable Connectivity Program. Um, that's a provider-centered program where companies will try and enroll people who are eligible for the program. It's based on 200% federal poverty rate. So any family or household that fits within those criteria can, can take advantage of that program to get $30 a month for broadband for, for, um, for their service. I think the challenge is for families that don't fit under that guideline, 
uh, yet are still uh, considered low income by California standards. So I think that's our next challenge is how do we get those families that are not considered low income by the federal government, Mm -hmm. but by California standards still are. All righty. Well, thank you so much for coming in this morning to share about this. We know the help is out there. When it's not there, that's one thing. When it's out there and people aren't connecting to it, we just got to keep talking about it. So we'll have you back to do that. We appreciate you. Thank you.